This morning we are in um, the middle of a series entitled The, the Epic Story. As I've just said, Easter is in, is in two weeks, and we're leading up to that. And again, I encourage you to invite people to come. Uh, but in this story, this epic story, it's the redemption story. And we've talked about the predicament. The predicament is that man is lost, uh, man cannot save himself, and man is in need of a savior. The search is that because of that hole left in man's heart at the fall, that man is searching, man is looking, searching for God. Everybody, whether they know it or not, is searching for God. This morning, we, talk, we turn to chapter 3, which is the response, the response. I want you to turn with me to Psalm 139. I'm going to read um, a little more passage than I normally do, but I want you to give the sense and the feel of what is being, is what is being said this morning. Psalm 139, but I want to give in it verse 1 through 12, and then the last two verses of the chapter. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand on me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from the Spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn and settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely darkness will hide me and light will become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. Verse 23 and 24. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way that is everlasting. Father, I thank you and I praise you this morning as we turn to your word that you will enlighten us, inform us, instruct us, encourage us, correct us, convict us, draw us, Lord, this morning by your word and by your spirit. I thank you for it this morning. I thank you that you've come into this moment right now to meet us right here. And we thank you and we praise you for it. Lord, do what, Holy Spirit, do what glorifies Christ this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. About 20 years ago, I began to run, actually 22 years ago now, I began to run quite a bit. And I've told you some of those stories before. And for about 10 years, I ran. I ran a lot. I would, I would put in um, as much as 30 miles a week. And uh, some days I'd put in 8 or 10 miles in a single day. And the town that we were in when I started to do this, I, I literally, it was a small town, and I literally ran, all, I ran over on every street, ran by every house, I ran by every business, and I'd run all over town, and it just became familiar for me to be, uh, to be running. And, and one day I was running, one day I was running, and a truck pulled up, and you just never are quite sure when you're running, and so a pu truck pulls up, and I looked, and it's Punk Roberts. Punk is a good friend of mine. He went to, they went to the church there where we pastored. And, 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 he, and he looked at me and he said, Pastor, what is chasing you? <laughs> and I said, well, I, you know, nothing's chasing me and I'm still running along. He, he said, well, I can guarantee you this. He said, mark this down. If you ever see me running, you better look and see what is chasing me. <laughs> well, I have news for you this morning. God is running after you. I don't care where you are in your walk with the Lord. I don't care where you've been. I don't care where you find yourself now. I know this, that God is running after you. God is searching for you. God is seeking you. And you cannot outrun him. Can I get an amen this morning? You cannot outrun him. Let me show you what I'm talking about this morning. You see, God's response to our predicament and our search is that God turns and is looking for us. In fact, this, this psalm that I read this morning, I want to unpack it a little bit, and then I want to talk about God's response to us. But this psalm has been affectionately labeled the hound of heaven, the hound of heaven, Psalm 139. The hound of heaven. And it's because of its language. Let me just unpack a little bit of that language this morning. Notice what it says there. It says, he searched for me. The word search means to explore, to seek out. 
uh, to consider in detail. It literally means to analyze in order to discover. To analyze in order to discover. I want you to know this morning that God is exploring. He's seeking out. He's considering you in every detail. He is looking in your life to discover your essential features, your essential meaning, your essential nature. God is searching for you. Another phrase there is, is the word know. Know me. Know me. The word know there means to, to notice or to reveal. It means literally to have a knowledge acquired through observation. In fact, it's an interesting word. The, uh, the, uh, the uh, root word for the word know me here is the word yada, yada, Y-A-D-A. In English, it, yada, 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 yada has come to know what? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just, you know, it's like, like this, uh, uh, it's almost like a boring or repetitive, empty talk. But in Hebrew, yada means God knows. In Hebrew, yada means God knows. And, and um. It may, be, it may be a play on word there that, that when people say yada, 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 I think it's hilarious that they're saying God knows, God knows, God knows, and they don't even know they're saying God knows. God knows me to reveal, to look inside. I'm telling you, God is searching for you. God is seeking to know you. The word there, uh, another phrase that is there is to perceive, to pay attention. Can I tell you something this morning? If you think you are out of God's sight of vision, I want you to know this morning, he is paying attention. Whether that means you're, you're out, you think you're out of his sight because you're doing something you don't want him to see, or whether that means to you that you think that God has lost sight of you, I want you to know this morning, God is paying Paying attention to perceive means to understand and to examine and to see and to teach. I want you to know this morning, God perceives where you are. He knows where you are. He is searching for you. Another phrase there. Another phrase there is the phrase discern. It means to measure up. Uh, to be aware of and cognizant of. God not only perceives me, God is, uh, he discerns me. He measures me up. He, he is cognizant of and aware of me. And, and probably one of the best phrases here in this whole uh, scripture is the word familiar with me. Familiar with me. It literally means to know the nature and the character of. To know the nature and the character of. Here's the point this morning, this morning that I want to get through to you, and it's on your outline uh, there. If you're following along on your outline, here it is. God is pursuing man. He's seeking man. He's searching for him that he might know him again. Understand me this morning. God's response to my predicament of being lost, of not being able to save myself, and of needing a Savior, God's response to my search of searching for Him is that God turns and searches for me. He seeks me. He seeks to know me. He searches me out. He perceives me. He discerns me. He becomes familiar with me. Aren't you glad this morning to know that God's response to our, pursuit, our predicament and our search is that God is pursuing us? That is good news this morning that God is pursuing us. In fact, when you read this psalm, when you read this psalm, you get, a, you get a sense of the depth and the breadth of God's response. Watch what it says here. It says, God responds. When I sit down, God responds. When I rise up, God responds. When I go out, God responds. When I lay down, God responds. Before I speak, God responds. When, I, when God is behind me and God is before me and God's hand is on me. Come on, somebody. When I fly as high as I can in the heavens, God is there. When I go as low as I can possibly go to the depths, God is there. When I, when I go into the darkness, God is there. God responds. God is coming after me. It is good news this morning that God responds and God is after you this this morning. That's God's response to us. In fact, it's fascinating to me as I kind of walk through it, some of the examples of God's response in our life. I just as I walk, I, this week I just took some time and I just walked through the scripture a little bit. You realize, don't you, that God's response of coming after us, it's in Genesis it starts with God saying, Adam, where are you? And in Revelation, it ends with God standing at the door and knock. I have news for you this morning. God will never stop responding. He starts by saying, where are you? And then he finds you, and he's knocking at your door. 
All in between we find is 2 Chronicles 16 and 9 that God's eyes are searching the whole earth that he might show himself strong in behalf of those hearts who are committed to him. In Psalm 142, we find that it says God looks down from heaven looking for my, mankind. In Job 23, we find out that God knows the path that I take even when I cannot see him. In John 4, 23, the Father seeks. In John 19, 10, it says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. In Luke 15, we find that God is the shepherd who has lost the sheep. God is the woman who has lost the coin. God is the father who has lost the prodigal. And in all those cases, the father is searching. The father is looking. In John 12, we find that Jesus is the, is the one who is drawing all men unto himself. Is anybody getting the picture this morning? In Revelation 19, he is the bridegroom waiting on the bride. And in Revelation chapter 4, verse 5, we are told that the Lord one day is coming again. In fact, when you search the whole of Scripture, let me just kind of list it off a little bit here. As you look through the whole of Scripture, here's what you find in God responding to our predicament in our search. Here's what you find, God. You find that God is calling. God is searching. God is chasing, God is wooing, God is knocking, God is walking with, God is speaking, God is revealing, God is rescuing, God is delivering, God is answering, God is healing, God is providing, God is comforting, God is confronting, God is convicting, God is saving, and one day we find that God, Jesus Christ, is returning. I'm telling you this morning, you're never going to get away from the pursuit of God. He is after you. And he will not stop. And that's good news. That's good news for every person that's under the sound of my voice. Whether you are living close to God or whether you're living far away from God, I want you to know this morning that God is after you. Turn to somebody this morning and look at them saying, God's after you. Now, some of you might have meant that in a way I didn't mean it this morning. <laughs> but it's still true. God is after you. In fact, I just want to take a minute here and unpack a little bit of, the, of some of the things you need to know about God's response. Wherever you find yourself in life, whether you find yourself needing to renew your relationship with God or whether you find yourself you're living close to God but you're in a place that is of deep need or whether you're in a place that your life is just wonderful with God right now, here's some things you need to always remember about God's response. God's response, God's search is inexhaustible. Inexhaustible. I say that because Lamentations chapter 3 verse 23 says this, his mercies are new every morning. You understand what that means, don't you? What that means is that every single day you start with a fresh set of mercies with God. Now, I don't know about you, but People, not anybody in here, but people can wear my patience thin. Can I get a witness this morning? People can wear my patience thin. Not any of you, but people. I am so glad, because here's what I know about Glenn. I know this about Glenn. If God's mercies weren't new every morning, I would wear God's patience thin. But I am so glad that every single day there are a new set of mercies and grace toward me. God's search for me is inexhaustible. I will never wear his patience thin. His search for me is inexhaustible this morning. That's good news, church. That's good news. Something else about his mercies are this. God's search is inescapable, inescapable. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 13 says this, nothing in all of creation is hidden from God's sight. This is where you say amen or oh me. It goes on to say everything is uncovered and everything is laid bare before the eyes of him. I want you to know this morning, God's search is inescapable, is inescapable. 
It's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like, well, here's the best way to know. God has his find my own in your life. You know what I'm talking about on your iPhone? Find my, find my AirPods, find my phone, find my iPad, find my wife, <laughs> find my keys. I've heard of some people having to get an air tag and put on their keys. I, I'm not going to call any names, but because they just can't find their keys, find my keys. Listen to me, I want you to know this morning, God has his find my own in your life. Come on, somebody. You cannot escape from God's find my. God's find my said, find my child. And he sees where you are. He knows where you are. His eye is on where you are. And that's a good thing. I am glad that God's find my is on because sometimes I can't even find myself. Right? I'm glad that God can find me even when I can't find myself. His search for me is inescapable, and you will never, ever, ever get away from the search of God. Amen? Amen. God's search is incomprehensible. In fact, the psalmist said that. He says, I can't even, I can't even comprehend these thoughts. Isaiah 58 says this, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. It's, it stuns me sometimes the degree, the depth that God goes to to continue his search for man. I'll give you an example. We're living where we are uh, right now. Today is St. Patrick's Day. I don't know how many of you know this. A lot of people deserve a pinch, a pinch as I look around this morning. St. Patrick's Day has come to be associated with shamrocks and lucky charms and, and, um, and good luck and, and all the pots of gold and all kinds of parades and all kinds of stuff. It's come to encompass the whole Irish heritage, but originally St. Patrick's Day celebrated St. Patrick who carried Christianity to Ireland. But there's even a deeper story than that. St. Patrick was actually taken to Ireland as a slave. He was enslaved and taken to Ireland. And he escaped slavery and left Ireland and went and found Jesus in his life and went back to the place that had held him slave and spread the gospel, the Christian belief, all over the island. Can, does that not, is that not just incomprehensible to you that God will take a slave who he has freed and set free and send him back then because his heart is still after the one very people that enslaved him? I'm telling you some of the depths that God goes to sometimes to keep searching for us is beyond my comprehension that I'm thankful I don't have to understand it. I, I just have to recognize that God is still searching for me and searching for you. And I have news for you this morning. There's some of you with some situations in your life, some people in your life. It's beyond your comprehension, beyond your ability to understand. I want you to know this morning that God's search is incomprehensible, but he is still searching. He is still searching. The fourth thing is this. God's search is irresistible. Ha! God's search is irresistible. Proverbs 19.21 says this. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Let me say it again. Psalms 19, Proverbs 19, 21. Many are the plans of a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Let me tell you something that I know right now this morning. Make your plans. Make your plans. But God's purpose is going to prevail. He's going to search, and 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 he's not going to give up searching. Make the plans. Listen, make make your plans, but know this, God's purpose will prevail. In fact, Proverbs 16 and 9 says this. With his heart, a man chooses his path, but God establishes his steps. I got news for you this morning. You cannot resist God's search in your life because he's going to keep coming. 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 His search is irresistible. And the last thing this morning is this. 
But you've got to remember, there are a lot more, but these are the ones for this morning. Is this God's search is unstoppable. God's search is unstoppable. You've heard it many times before. And we just, it just bears repeating this morning. Romans 8, 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, shall tribulation. I'm sorry, who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or distress or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are counted as sheep all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. No, In all these things you are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God's search is unstoppable. He's going to keep loving you and loving you and loving you and that love is going to chase you and chase you and pursue you wherever you find yourself in life. I'm so glad that God's response to my predicament and my search is that God is coming after me. Amen. Amen. He's coming after me. He's searching after me. So what do we do with that? What do you and I do with that? I want to give you three things. There's a lot of things you could do with that this morning. If you want to make the most of God's search for you, I just want to give you three simple things this morning. The first thing, if God is running after you, the first thing is this. It's um, stop running. I, I know that sounds complicated. Stop running. See, this is true of those who've not given their lives to the Lord. And it may be true... In fact, I think there's probably a degree at which is true in all of our lives. God certainly is running after those who do not know him. He runs after the lost. He loves the lost. He seeks the lost. But God's running after you too. I think, in fact, I think every single person that has a relationship with the Lord, there's probably some area in our life uh, where we just need to stop running and let God be God. Let God do what God's going to do. Let God do what he wants to do. In fact, listen, in fact, you just as well stop running because you are not going to get away. It's kind of like Caden running from his shadow. I, I, we, we were fortunate enough. I've got about a 15-second clip that I want to show here in a second. We were fortunate enough. We were at a uh, Silver Dollar City in, uh, yeah, in Missouri there with them. And, and we were fortunate enough. We was videoing Caden. And we, we, found, we found him. We were vid- have on video him discovering his shadow. And, and he's running along, and he looks at the shadow, and you can tell that he's looking at the shadow, and find, he stops, and he turns, and he faces the sun, and he thinks it's gone. Only to turn around and see that it is there, and he takes off again. Play, play, the, play the video real quick. Watch him here. Watch. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> can I tell you something? That's the way it is with God in you. You can run, and you can run, and you can run, and you can get to a place in life where you think, oh, I've outrun him. But you just look around, and he is still right there running after you. In response to God's running after you, can I tell you, stop running. You're not going to get away. Amen? You're not going to get away. Second, in fact, and before I do that, let me, let me say this. Let me just say this about running. running. Running looks a whole lot of different ways. Running from God can be too busy. Running can God can find every, every excuse possible, an excuse not to pray, an excuse not to be in the Word, an excuse uh, not to uh, be with other fellow believers, an excuse not to uh, be involved in a ministry, we can, uh, excuse, or it can be avoiding. It can be just kind of staying away. You, you, you ever run into somebody in the grocery store and you see them see you? You know they're avoiding you. Come on now, you know what I'm talking about. It can be just a life that's full of distractions. Running can be just a life that is totally so full of distractions that you are, you are, you are, 
You, are, you do not have time. And that, that is a form of running from God. When you feel your life so full that there's no room for God, that's a form of running from God. Can I tell you? Stop running. Stop running. Second thing is this. Be real. Be real. What I mean by that is get real. Listen, God knows, so there's no reason to hide. In fact, listen, you can be transparent with God because you are transparent to God. Oh, let me say that again. You can be transparent to God because, I mean, uh, to God because you are transparent to God. There's nothing he doesn't know, and he loves you anyway. That, that's, the, that's the amazing thing. You know, the, the, um, you know there's, there's the, the, the adage that says, you know, those, those, that, those that live with you, they know you best, right? Can I tell you something? The amazing thing about God is God knows me best. God knows every little thing about me. God knows stuff about me that you don't know. God knows stuff of me, of me that my wife doesn't know. God knows stuff about me I don't know. And God loves me anyway. You can be real with him. Be real with him. Listen, being real and transparent with God is one of the most powerful things you can do in life because it makes you vulnerable to God. And vulnerable is actually a good thing. Listen, being vulnerable to God, you can stop covering up your hurt. You can stop hiding your heart. You can stop denying your wrong and your error. You can be vulnerable before God because vulnerability leads to intimacy. In fact, vulnerability is interesting. We, uh, in, our, in our culture today, we see vulnerability as a doormat. Vulnerability in a real relationship is not a doormat. It's a welcome mat. It allows us to welcome God into our lives. Listen, you need to stop running and you need to be real. Welcome God in. Just be real. Admit your faults. Admit what you've done wrong. Admit when you've made a mistake. Admit that you are a person. You, we all, at some level, are capable of injuring someone. Listen, be re- stop running and be real. Be real. And the third thing is this. Rest. Rest. Rest in God's pursuit of you. Let me circle back to the last two verses as I try to pull this down. Let me circle back to the last two verses that I read at the beginning. And here's what it says. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there's any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You see what the psalmist does here? Psalmist talks about all of how God is pursuing them. The heights, the depths, before, behind, before I even speak a word, you know it. He talks about all of how God pursues. And then at the end, you see this. The psalm gives in and rests in God's pursuit to search him, to know him, to test him, to correct him, to lead him. Listen, rest in God's pursuit. He is in it for your good. God is running after you because it is for your good. It's kind of like exercise and rest. You know, we do, we do a lot of running, but we need to do some resting too. You do understand, don't you, that, that exercise and rest go together. That exercise tears the muscles, but it is in rest that the muscles begin to heal and become stronger. And so it is in your life and my life. When we are running from God and we, we stop and be real and we rest, listen to me, when you rest in God, you have a time to heal and grow back stronger. Here's the main idea I want to leave with you this morning, and it's this. If you want to find God, simply turn and run to him, and you will find that he is pursuing you you. If you want to find God, simply turn and run to him and you will find that he is pursuing you. Victor Frankl, a uh, psychiatrist of a previous generation, he was of Jewish descent. He said that he prayed every day and he read the Jewish scriptures every day. And I don't know all of what he Develop, but he developed a theory of therapy based on the meaning of life. And here's something that he said. It caught my eye. I came across it the other day. So I was doing some research, and he said this. Between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space, our power to choose 
we have the power to choose our response. And in our response lies our growth and our freedom. It's true, isn't it? It's true from a therapy standpoint. It's true in God, in God isn't it, too? Our response to him. We have the power to choose our response. And in our response, to which if we choose right, is the growth and the freedom. that we, When God responds by searching for us, respond by turning to him. And it will determine your freedom and it will determine your growth. So here's my challenge for you this morning. Whenever you sense God seeking you, respond to him. What, whatever it is. There may be some of you sitting here this morning that you've sought through my preaching the word this morning. You've thought God's seeking you. There have been a tug on your heart. There's been a tug on your life. Maybe it's just something in particular. Maybe it's something that you're involved in. Maybe it's something you've tried to cover up. Maybe it's a, a situation that is no fault of your own, but you just feel God. Listen, when you sense God seeking you, respond. When you sense God seeking you, respond to him. Turn and you'll find he's right there. He is right there waiting on you. And I believe with all of my heart, he's seeking some of you this morning. He's seeking all of us at some level. But there's some this morning, he's tugging at your heart. Now, can I tell you this morning, don't make an excuse. Don't find some way to put it off. Respond this morning to his seeking you. You'll find that there is a loving, <laughs> forgiving, empowering, encouraging father that's right there waiting on you. I want you to bow your heads. And if you sense God seeking you this morning, I want to give you an opportunity to respond. I give you an opportunity to respond. Listen to me this morning. Turn loose this morning and let God, let God love you into the place that he has for you in your life. I just sense there's some this morning. You, God is seeking you. Right now, you need to respond to him. You need to turn and just say, Lord, you're seeking me for a reason. I turn this morning. I surrender to you that situation. I surrender to you that problem. I surrender to you that trouble. I surrender to you that relationship. I surrender to you, Lord, that, that sin or what I've done wrong or whatever it may be in your life. You need to turn this morning and say, God, I give up. I'm tired of running. I'm going to give it over to you this morning. I want to turn it over to you this morning. If you want to do that this morning, I'm simply, your response this morning, the witness of your response is simply for you to raise your hand to the Lord. And if you, as you write, you're saying to the Lord, Lord, I'm tired of running. I, I don't want to run from this, Lord. I don't want to run from this. I want to respond to you. And if that's you this morning, whatever the level is, whether you need to be saved or whether you are saved and you belong to Christ and there's something there that you need to, you know you need to turn over to God. If that's you this morning, raise your hand real quickly. Hands up and down. One, two, three, four. Five. I know there's more. God's tugging you this morning. God's seeking you. God's searching for you this morning. Do not reject his search. Do not reject his seeking you. Do not reject his wooing you and pulling you this morning. Are there more that want to join these probably half a dozen that have raised their hand? And just raise your hand and say, God, uh, I, I, I'm not going to run. I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to let God have his way in this. However, whatever, however it turns out, I want God to have his way in this. I'm not going to run anymore. Any others that want to hand up and down because I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. There's another hand. Thank you. Two more, three more hands. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. There's another hand. I believe with all my heart this morning, God is giving you an opportunity. You know there's some things in your life God's been seeking you. He's been after you about. This morning is a chance to just raise your sin. I'm, I'm not going to run anymore. I'm going to pause just another moment or two, and then I'm going to move on. Anybody else want to join these probably dozen or so that have raised their hand across the congregation? Because I'm going to pray this morning for those that have raised their hand. Anybody else? Okay. Okay, just keep your heads bowed. I want to pray over you this morning. Lord, you see the hands that were raised this morning. You see where they are. Lord, as they turn that hand up, Lord, what they're saying is, in a way, Lord, they're saying, I surrender, I submit to you. I don't want to run in this area in my life anymore. Lord, if there are some of those, Lord, that it's a sin in their life, 
Lord, I, right now, Lord, they're going to ask forgiveness for that sin. And, Lord, you are just and faithful to forgive us from our sins and to cleanse us from anything that separates us from you. And, Lord, if it's sin that they're dealing with, I thank you, Lord, that they're just going to repent and give that to you. Lord, there may be others, Lord, that are struggling in an area in their life. And they've struggled because they've tried to do it without you. I thank you right now, Lord. They raised their hand and said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this alone anymore. I know God's been after me about this in my life. I thank you that right now, Lord, you are going to move in their heart and their life. You're going to move into that place of surrender in their life, Lord. I thank you for it right now. And there may be some others, Lord, as the hands went up this morning. There may be some others, God. You've been after them about a relationship or you've been after them about a ministry or you've been after them about a step that they need to take in their life. And Lord, I thank you that right now you're, you're going to step into that place and, and instead of running from you, they're going to run with you now. They're going to run with you now, God. They're turning and they're running in the direction that you're running. I thank you for it, God. And you're going to empower every single one of these because your search, Lord, finds us right at the place that we are. And I thank you and I praise you for it this morning. Thank you that you never stop searching, seeking, running after us. You never stop pursuing us. I thank you for that this morning. And I praise you for the grace and the mercy of that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I believe those that raised your hand this morning, I believe you're going to sense and know that God's moved into your place of submission and surrender. And you're going to find a new, fresh, uh, a new refreshing, a new encouraging, a new strengthening in that place in your life that you said, God, this place, I don't want to run anymore. I'm giving it over to you. And as the days go forward, can I could just encourage all of us, every one of us, when you sense God knocking, when you feel him searching, Respond to him because he wants to do something incredible in that place in your life. Amen. Amen. I do hope you'll join me next week. Stand up with me as we try to finish this one. I do hope you'll join me next week for the fourth chapter in our study of the epic story, The Answer. The Answer. You're going to want to be here next week. This Wednesday night, I hope you'll join us in prayer. Prayer has begun, it's gotten more and more powerful. Join us in prayer. Uh, we're going to talk about the last phrase in the Lord's Prayer. Um, Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're going to talk about that this week. I hope you'll be here. Till I see you again, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Go in the blessings of the Lord. If you need to talk with me about anything this morning, uh, about the sermon, come and I'll be, uh, something God's doing in your life, we'll hang around the front here for a little bit. God bless you. We love you.